Ladies and gentlemen, geeks and nerds, welcome back to another episode of Dissecting Minecraft. And I'm here again, as usual, joined by my partner in crime methods. And uh, yeah, we are going to talk about logic gates today. All right. So uh, how you doing, methods? Sorry, I should have said that before. You were doing all right? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. So uh, a few things. So we've got our log logic gates behind us. And uh, we're going to go on to those uh, in a second. But first of all, I want to talk about the challenge from last episode. We've got some things to show you. Uh, but before I show you that, I just want to quickly say that uh, uh, what we're going to do is we've set up a, uh, a new Reddit community for this uh, for this series, which is what we're going to use to uh, to accept submissions uh, from now on. So uh, I've created a few posts, one for each episode so far. So if you've already created a submission, then get over there and uh, reply to one of those posts with your submission. And the idea here is that uh, we've had quite a lot of submissions that come through on our Discord, but the thing is they kind of get lost in the chat. And if people can't watch these videos in the future, it's going to be hard for them to find those submissions. And we really want to keep those all together and make them a, like a useful resource for, for everyone to, to find and, uh, and to use. So yeah, so get over to Reddit and there'll be a link in the description to that. And uh, yeah, post your submissions onto the onto the correct episode. All right, so we'll talk about that a bit later on. But uh, yeah, first of all, uh, last week's last week's challenge. So let me remind everyone what it was. So last week's challenge was to uh, help me with my trash compactor in my Death Star. And it was to create uh, a five minute clock. And after every five minutes, uh, you should generate a 20 game tick pulse, wait for 10 seconds, and then generate a second 20 game tick pulse. Now Method said, and I remember this, he said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna participate. So Methods, <laughs> let's see your full let's see your full design, shall we? Yeah, I, I messed <laughs> up a little bit. All right, so here's my thing. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to edit the main part of it, which is the pulse extenders. So I could quickly do this right now. I just want to add a mono stable here, six tick repeater, into a little pulse lengthener, parator based. And this would generate your 20 game tick pulse mm -hmm. right here. Yep. And then you could add a 10 second delay with a hopper clock or something similar and add the same thing again. And then you have two 20 game nice. tick pulses. Okay, that's nice. And this this uh, th this bit on the front, so you're going to have, so this works by you put an item into the hopper, it goes into this dropper, the comparator detects it. Well, there you go, shoots up. And then the uh, comparator detects it. So this observer here sees, uh, it's facing upwards, so it detects the uh, the change of the comparator. That observer detects that that observer, which powers this block, which shoots the item out. It goes up the water stream, up into the uh, cobwebs, and then floats down. And takes twenty. It takes ten minutes. Uh, sorry, it takes five minutes to float down through the cobwebs back into the hopper, and it all starts all starts again. So that's the five minute control there. Right. That, that, that item's glitching out a little bit. <laughs> I just warped the game forward, oh, right. just speed it up a little bit. Oh, I see. Right. All right, so here is one of the submissions. So again, we, we got quite a few submissions, uh, just a lot that we have done on other episodes, but uh, yeah, we just want to focus on one or two uh, community submissions. And this one is from uh, Rosie, who's one of uh, one of the moderators over on Discord. And he's created this uh, this, this huge thing. But uh, yeah, I can see that Rosie put a lot of work into it and uh, has even got some doors here that, that uh, open and close at the right time. So I wanted to uh, show that off. So uh, yeah, uh, in terms of how this works, uh, I'm not going to say I understand it, <laughs> but it kind of looks like the kind of thing that I would build. So I think down here we've got a few indicators for each minute. So we go, so we can reset it. We can go through one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, up to five minutes. And when we get to the end of the five minutes, we've got these light displays here, and uh, yeah, the, the doors close and squash squash the items. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I understand it. But uh, any uh, any comments you want to make methods on this one? No, <laughs> it's, I have no clue what it's actually doing. It looks like he's cycling around items here in this hopper loop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's an item in here. There's one item that goes through these hoppers. They're all chained together in a loop. This and... will actually trigger those two outputs here. That's a reset, and that's another one. This will actually trigger this clock here with bunch of items yeah i think that's the is that which clock is that that's the oh, this is this is a one minute clock so i think he uses this one minute clock five times so once for every every yeah once for every of the five minutes and then there's this t flip flop kind of thing here and that controls whether the doors are open or not so there's an item in the top 
And when it gets pushed down to the bottom, it, this comparator detects it and it goes through this redstone line up here and that control, controls the doors. So that will, that will get triggered um, right at the end. The lamp gets to the end, I think. But yeah, it looks, it looks cool. <laughs> Okay, I've, I've set the tick rate to 200, so the game is running 10 times faster. We should see it. Okay, so when the light gets working. to the end, there you go, the doors are yep, shut. There we go. Yeah, did it. There you go. So there it, it does work. <laughs> so well done, Rosie. <laughs> Very impressed with the, with the effort you put in onto, onto that one. All right, and now we're over to the main topic for today, and that is logic gates. So, uh, yeah, so Method has set up a whole bunch of things for us to talk about. So we'll go through these one by one. And uh, yeah, I think we'll start off with some easy stuff and uh, yeah, move on from there. Okay, so we talk about today about the logic gates, and we're going to start it really simple. And there's the I/O gate, the in/out gate, and it will just turn the lamp on if it's mm -hmm. on, and turn the lamp off if it's off. It might sound super simple right now mm -hmm. and very basic, but mm -hmm. it's important to know all these names right. to do research and also have a little bit of a clue what they're supposed to do because you will use those in all kinds of shapes and forms. Right, and actually terminology so. is, is quite important because then, as you say. As you, as you kind of research things and talk to other people in the community, you can just use the term IO gate and people know what you're talking about. You don't have to say things like a lever with some redstone on a lamp. You know, it just makes communication much easier. Exactly. Okay. Here we have the same thing inverted, which is the basic not gate. Hmm. It's just a lever on a torch. So when we turn it on, it turns off. And when we turn it off, it turns on. Hmm. So those are the most two simple gates. They're basically just redstone lines. Right, so not really nothing special. So, so, so the not gate is like a is is the opposite. It's basically just an inverted I/O gate. Okay. Then we have the OR gate. That means if the left input or the right input is on, or if both of them are on. Right. So always imagine those blocks with the levers as your inputs. Mm -hmm. Here you have two inputs. If any of both is on or both are on, it will be on. Okay. So one or two or. Yeah, so, so, e so e either one or the other, or both. Then we okay. have the NOR gate, which is the exact same thing, just inverted again. So instead of drawing the redstone line directly, we just have a torch in there. And if this or this is on, it will be off. Mm -hmm. Same for if both are on. So then nor. we have the AND gate. Hmm? Here you can see that means if left is on, nothing happens. If right is on, nothing happens. But if left and right is on, it turns on. So the and is, yeah, it's this and this. Yeah, so right and left have to be on. Exactly. Okay. And then we have the NAND gate, which is <laughs> the same thing again. No, this time we don't invert it. So right. it's just an inverted NOR gate, basically. Uh, AND gate, sorry. Inverted AND gate, right. Yeah. So if they're both off, then it goes... They're both off, it goes off. All oh, right, so only if they're both off does the lamp light up. Any other scenario, exactly. it's on. Exactly. Right, good. Okay, and then we have the XOR gate. Mm -hmm. That means if we turn on the left input, we get an output. If we turn on the right input, we get an output. But if we turn both on, we don't actually get an output. Ah, right. So this is similar to AND, but it's... we just do this again. So left is on, we get something. Right is on, we get something. If they're both on... No, right, so that's... Oh, sorry, so that's like the OR gate. So with the OR gate, it's left or right or both. This is XOR, so it's left or right, but not both. Yep. Okay, and that's how you put that. Then we have the XNOR gate, which is yet again the same thing as the XOR gate, just inverted. As you can see here, we literally even feed it into another torch. Right. So, off. I see, yep. Off. And if both are on, this will also be on. So it's like the same build, but just a red redstone torch in to invert. Just inverted, yep. Okay, yep. Well, that one. And then yep. we have the A imply B gate, mm -hmm. which is if you turn on. A, you will get an output. Right. And if you turn on B, nothing will happen besides A is actually blocked from giving you an output. Okay. So right. basically, if you imagine this here, the left one is A, the right one is B, B basically just locks A. 
Right, okay. Let's see. And here we have the same thing flipped around. No, it's not flipped around, it's just not inverted again. Okay. So this is the A Nimply B gate. <laughs> Same right. thing, just inverted. Right, so if with these ones, just to make sure I understand these, so these ones, if the if B is on, then A has no effect. Yep. But if B is off, then whether A is on or off is, yeah, so whether A, A is on or off, that's what controls the lamp. Okay, so the B is the lock, the A is the on or off, and these are either inverted or they're not on the back. Okay, exactly. Right. Okay, got it. Got it. Yep. Nice one. Okay, and those are the basic most used logic gates. Mm -hmm. Just as examples, I've added some more how to do them differently because obviously this is not the only way. There's mm -hmm. loads and loads of ways. So here we basically have the I.O. gate. Mm -hmm. On, off, on, off. Yep. Can be ob obviously used for the other gate as well, just inverted. We just move the redstone block this time instead of adding a torch. Uh, right, so the starting position of the redstone block is just in the opposite position. Exactly. Okay, yep. Here we have the R gate. Right, yes. I've never thought of doing it with observers like this. I've always, I've only done like some logic gates, like not very often, but when I do, I always do like these kind of old school style. So, they yeah. most of the time work, but sometimes it's interesting to, to challenge yourself to use mm. something differently because I'm pretty sure you can use almost every single redstone component the game to make some sort of a logic gate mm -hmm. maybe even more probably also mobs and all kinds of other stuff oh yeah yeah okay then we have the uh, end gate here mm -hmm. right okay so let's 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 talk through this one this one's worth talking about i think okay so if we the bottom block here is powering the rail and the redstone block is powering the rail. Right, yeah. So both of them have to be removed to get an output. Ah, okay. And the bottom lever only powers the bottom. Right. Piston and the top. Ah, oh, I see. Therefore, we get an output here. Right. And if we turn it back on again, any of those blocks will actually turn it on. So right. if we just trigger the bottom, this will pu push the block above the torch, which will power the rail. Or if we just trigger the top, it will push the redstone block the rail which also powers it right i see so the tool right so the torch i just i'm going to, just going to repeat what you just said but it helps me to kind of uh, solidify it in my in my mind so of we've course. got this circuit right at the top here so the two observers uh the piston and the redstone block so if that controls that part okay so that redstone block powers that that rail and the same at the bottom here we've got this lever observer into this piston which pulls this block back which takes the power away because the torch that's underneath is powering that block we take that away now the rail is no longer powered because the observer sees that and controls this it's right here with the lamp all right okay exactly. i think that makes sense yeah and then here we have the simplest possible xr gate probably so it's on it's off it's on. Right. And this is using quasi connectivity for the top one right yeah let's use this qc but you could also just add a block here, it would still. Okay. So I've got a question actually. So it's interesting you do that. So if there's a block here, is it powering through quasi connectivity or is it powering the block? Is there like a priority of which one it's using to power power the piston? Uh, it's powering it through the block. The priority is usually the direct powered stuff first. Right. Okay. Therefore, no... we power this block, which directly powers the bottom piston. Right. Okay. So in that case, there's no QC happening. But if we remove the block, then QC happens. Then QC is happening. Okay, that is good. To, that's good detail that I didn't know, but uh, yeah, that is useful. Yeah, and that's already it for today. And now okay. I want to challenge all the viewers to show us more logic gates. You know how it basically works now. You know all the terminology, and now you've got to do the work. Okay, all right. So you got you can use any kind of components you like. So let's see what kind of components, what kind of uh, all gates. Sorry, what kind of logic gates? <laughs> what kind of logic gates you uh, you can build using any kind of redstone components? Uh, in the game and we see how inventive you can be also there's some more logic gates but they're very rarely used and they're very specific as well so if you have some of those feel free to add them as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever comes to mind the only thing i would challenge is to not use the exact same we've used here right yeah, yeah. and that's it
And of course, because when it comes to the stuff we're showing now, there's we're not showing like practical uses of this yet, but what's going to happen in the future is we're going to start combining a lot of these concepts together. So when we build some, some proper contraptions later on, we'll be combining some logic gates with some pulse extenders, with some pulse generators, all this kind of stuff. It's all going to come that, together. And then that's, that's exactly get. the point. So yeah. in the future, we will actually start dissecting some contraptions and then all of these terminologies and stuff will come back. Yeah, exactly. And if you missed it, you're going to miss out because we won't have time to explain that all. Yeah, so this is all foundational work to make sure that once we get to the more interesting stuff where we really do the dissecting, it, it kind of makes some sense. And we've got some reference to come back to so we can say, come back to this episode and check out the, the logic gates and exactly. yeah, it'll make sense. All right, so thanks Methods for uh, joining us again for another episode. That was super cool as usual. So uh, yeah, everyone, uh, feel free to uh, send us those submissions. Get over to the Reddit. There will be a post there with uh, with this week's episode. Uh, so post your replies uh, to that to that link. Uh, yeah, check out the description to get over there. And yeah, if you've got any comments or suggestions, then get it in the comment section as usual. And if you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. Alright my geeks, until next time, I will see you later. Bye bye.